Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Keisha. Over the years, I've learned so much about skincare, and there is now a few items or types of products that I no longer carry in my skincare collection. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys five types of products that I no longer use in my skincare routine, and I will also be giving you five alternatives. If you're not already, make sure you are subscribed, and without further ado, let's get on with the video. Before we get into these specific items, I do want to preface by saying I am not a dermatologist. I'm not licensed to tell you how to take care of your skin. This video is simply things that I've learned, things that I found work for me, and as always, what works for one person's skin type may not work for another. This video is just for entertainment purposes and perhaps a jumping off point for you to start your own research. The first product that I no longer use is one that I haven't used for so long that I don't even have an example to share with you guys, and that is makeup wipes. Now, I already made a video as well as a blog post going over all of my thoughts on makeup wipes my uh, research on them and why I personally don't use them in my routine and I think everybody should stop using them as a means of makeup removal but I'm not gonna go into all of that here basically makeup wipes are really irritating to your skin they have a lot of surfactants as well as alcohol in them and they don't really do anything to remove your makeup they pretty much just slide it all around instead of using a makeup wipe you want to look for a product that's going to actually dissolve the dirt that's on your face so it will dissolve your makeup it will dissolve your SPF as well as all like the pollution and everything else that's outside in the earth um, dissolve that before cleansing your skin with a regular wash off now you can get an oil cleanser this one is the one from Claire's their gentle deep black cleansing oil um, you can use a balm the one that I love is um, the green what is it called? It's green, I'll put it up here on the screen somewhere, I don't really remember the name. Clean green, something like that. You can also use a micellar water. This one is from Annabelle. Just if you feel like you want something to get into the hairline, I typically use this after using an oil cleanse just so I can get into those areas that were perhaps missed. And if you are really, really lazy, there are products out there that are cleansers that actually dissolve makeup as well. And one of my favorites is the Purity from Philosophy. It's really inexpensive. It's a three-in-one cleanser for your eyes, for your face, um, as well as I believe it tones the skin. So really cool, dissolves all your makeup, and then you just wash it away. Now with this one, you don't have to go in with, a, with another cleanse. I would personally recommend using this as well as a micellar water, just because I feel like your hairline is something you need to pay attention to as well. But yeah, you can just go in with a water-based cleanser after using your double cleanse method, and then that will get off all of the makeup and debris on your face. Okay, the second product that I no longer use is another one that I actually don't even have to share with you guys because I have stopped using it for such a long time. And this is a foundation with SPF. Now I could go on for ages about why foundations with SPFs are terrible and perhaps I may do a video on it, but essentially it, you will not use enough foundation to get the real benefits of using uh, SPF. SPF is super important. It's that one ingredient that if you just add this into your routine, your skin will be beautiful for years and years and years to come. The number one cause of a lot of skin damage is sun damage. And you know, something as easy as a SPF, like why not just put that on and just prepare your skin for success. So I don't use a foundation that has it in it because I'm sorry, I'm not applying a thick layer glob of foundation on my face. That's never gonna be enough. So instead I use a dedicated one. Now there are two types of SPFs that you can use being chemical and physical and for a very long time as a person with darker skin it's been really really hard to find um, SPFs that don't leave a tint on your skin sunscreen has come so far in the past decade alone and there is a sunscreen for everyone out there I know that Susan Yara just posted a video on some of her favorite SPFs if you have not seen it I will link it down below but one that I love using is a mineral sunscreen this one is by Sun by me which is a Korean skincare brand um, it's the true Sika mineral 100 calming cream Cream, which also has tea tree oil and um, it has 50 plus SPF PA++++ 
plus. Um, so yeah, that's a good one, which is super inexpensive. I think it's like $9. Another one that I really love is by CeraVe, which is one of my all time favorite skincare companies. This one is the Skin Renewing Day Cream Broad Spectrum 30 SPF. And what's great about this is it actually has encapsul encapsulated retinol in it. So you're getting some of those good effects as well as it being a really effective sunscreen. So you do need quite a bit of this and this is why I use a dedicated one. Now I'll use this in the morning and then to set my makeup or to refresh throughout the day, I'll use a spray SPF, which is not as effective as of course your actual sunscreen. But if you're just in the office, you're running out for, you know, 15 minutes somewhere, running out for half an hour somewhere, this is definitely something that you can apply. This is the Kula Makeup Setting Spray with 30 SPF. And so I just apply this. I actually use both of them together, to be honest. I'll put this on, do my makeup, and then set my makeup with this. And then, you know, do whatever you need to do. But yeah, it's really great. You can bring it with you, touch up. I love this thing. I know that they've repackaged this bottle, so I will leave a link to it down below. The third product that I no longer use is a dedicated hyaluronic acid. Now, I have been such an avid lover of hyaluronic acid for so long, but as it comes to simplifying your skincare routine, the truth is a lot of your facial creams, your uh, toners, um, any serums that you're using already have some type of humectant or even just specifically hyaluronic acid in it that I don't feel like you need a separate hyaluronic acid. That is the point that I'm making. Super great ingredient, but you don't need its own ingredient. Personally, I love using serums that have high quality active ingredients in it as well as or as alongside a hyaluronic acid or some type of humectant. And this could be like a vitamin C. Um, this could be a retinol. Personally, the one that I have right now is the niacinamide 10% and zinc 1% from The Ordinary. This one helps to fight inflammation in your skin, blemishes, so they're tackling something alongside being hydrating. And another one that I have is The Ordinary Alpha Arbitin 2% and hyaluronic acid. So it's gonna help to lighten up the dark spots on your face while delivering you that good HA. Um, if you want something a little bit more simpler, you can actually just use aloe vera, which is itself a humectant. Um, um, this is the Nature Republic Aloe Vera 92% Soothing Gel, and I've used this for my hair, for my body, for my face. It's an all-around beautiful gel, and this type of product is always in my skincare collection. Um, otherwise, it's like the natural aloe, but depending on how lazy I feel. Um, so yeah, that's another product that I use. Okay, the next product that I no longer use on my skin is any type of astringent. Now, long ago, where skincare was concerned, if you're someone who has a lot of acne, the key to clear skin was believed to be drying out your skin. Now, decades later, we understand that moisture is super, super, super important for your overall skin health. And that's why it's one of those products that I no longer use. One of the most popular toners right now on the market that a lot of people use happens to be Witch Hazel. And I am someone who's used this so much as well. I'm almost on this bottle. But Witch Hazel is not really the greatest toner for your skin because it it is made to dry out your skin, essentially. You're clearing up all that oil and it's like a, a, a double cleanse. So if you're gonna use this in the step of a cleanser, I mean, fine, sure, um, but as a toner, it's not really the greatest thing to use. And I'll leave a video down below from the Golden RX, which explains perfectly why Witch Hazel is not the best toner to use on your skin. Um, more than this, any type of toner that has alcohol in it is also one that I no longer use. This one I used to love so much. This is a Sonam Park Beauty Water, but they actually do have alcohol in it. And I've noticed that my skin starts to get a little bit drier while using this. Now. I feel like these type of products do have a place um, if you're someone who's not willing to get rid of it. For a lot of these products, it's not that you should never use them, but you should change the way that you're using them. So for this one, for example, I don't use it as a toner. I use it if I am um, coming home from work and I'm going to the gym and I don't wanna have makeup on my face, I'll go ahead and use this and just clear off my face makeup. That's the perfect way to use it. Um, just to make sure that my skin can breathe while I'm working out. That's definitely a beautiful use of this. You can do that with the witch hazel as well if you want. Um, but the point is I don't use it as a toner. Instead, I would switch to a moisturizing or hydrating toner. This one is the Time Revolution, the first treatment essence from Nisha. This one is so beautiful. It just seeps into the skin very nicely and it helps to even out, you know, your, your skin itself, the, the pH level, hydrate and prepares your skin for the next layer of moisture. This is an amazing one. It is kind of a little bit on the pricey side. It's about 30 to 
$40 depending on where you pick it up. But this is a really good one too because it has great ingredients. Other than that, a toner is an excellent way to deliver acids to the skin. It is a very liquid product. It's the first thing that you apply onto your skin. It's the perfect delivery method for those type of exfoliating ingredients. For example, I have the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliator with salicylic acid as well as the Sun By Me AHA BHA PHA 30 Days Miracle Toner. Both are excellent toners, excellent acids to help exfoliate your skin in a way that's really gentle still. On that note of acids and exfoliators, we are now in our fifth product that I no longer use on my skin and this happens to be a granulated exfoliator. Now I have been a lover of scrubs for so long and I and I quickly realized that it was part of the problem when it came to my dark spots. These granulated exfoliators create what they call the micro tears on your skin and for someone with highly pigmented skin like myself these micro tears can leave dark spots and as someone who is getting rid of dark spots or getting rid of acne it's kind of counterproductive to be using something that's creating more dark spots to get rid of dark spots, right? So one of my favorites for years had been the Aveeno uh, Skin Brightening Daily Scrub, which I think is a very gentle form of granulated exfoliator if you still feel like you need to use one. Personally, I use this like once a month um, when my skin is not acting up. I still do think it's really, really gentle on your skin. Personally, I'll use it on my chest as well as my shoulders because I have dark spots I'm trying to get rid of there as well, but it barely and rarely ever touches my face. Another scrub that I've really loved for such a long time is the Lush Dark Angels. And I've seen people actually use the scrub as well as a handheld physical exfoliator, which honestly I cry when I see those videos because why? Um, the point is this has the charcoal scrubs in it and those create those tiny little micro tears on your skin, the same effect goes as with um, any type of scrub. But what I do use this for once again is my body. Your body has a thicker skin um, and you can use a little bit more of a harsher scrub if you say. So something like sugar, I wouldn't put it on my face, but you can definitely put sugar on your body. That is just fine. For my face though, I choose to use my chemical exfoliators. So like the two toners that I showed you before, as well as one of my favorites is the Vine Vera Reservatrol High Potency Cellular Peel. And this one is super beautiful because you can really see like the exfoliation on your skin. And what I love about this so much is that it really helps your products absorb beautifully to the skin. You only need to use it two to three times a week. Please no more than that when it comes to an exfoliator and um, it has great results. I can really see it because before I use this product, if I use a moisturizer, I have to sit there and rub and rub and rub. But when I use this exfoliator, it literally just pulls the product into my skin. It absorbs so quickly. It is astonishing. One of my very favorite exfoliators. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this particular one is pretty pricey, but for me, I would rather fork out the cash and get something that really works for my skin um, rather than picking up a bunch of like really inexpensive things that for my skin don't work. Another one of my favorite types of chemical exfoliators are pads. So this is the Nesif um, MD Dermaceuticals Detox Pads. They're complexion perfecting pads with alpha and beta hydroxy acids. I feel like pads are like the stronger form of exfoliators because they are sitting here saturated in the product. But if you really want to get that exfoliation on the top, make perhaps an alpha hydroxy acid on the top of your skin layer to give you a more um, even complexion, smoothen out your texture, this is definitely something that you'll want to use. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. These are some of the products that I've taken out of my skin routine and have replaced. Leave a comment down below and let the rest of us know what products have you taken out of your skincare routine because I'm really curious. And click over here to see some of my previous videos. As always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye.